Are we up and running? Looks like we're good to go. Third floor again, and there's going to be a lot more of this in the next couple of weeks actually too. So this is, uh, the paper is for the third print this year, the second in the Hoxai series, the paper today. John San has almost finished the blocks for that print and test printing has to begin and then hopefully edition printing will begin. So this is the first batch of paper for the second print in the Hoxai series. And because I'm going to Canada for two weeks in February, I have to get paper ready for all the printers for all the jobs they're going to do all the way through February. It has to be done before I go. So we're going to see probably quite a few more sizing streams over the next few weeks. Interesting or boring? I don't know. But that's what it's going to have to be. Uh, two days from now, won't be, two days from now we'll be back downstairs carving. Okay, the glue has been soaking overnight, so first thing I've got to do today before we actually start doing the thing is I have to make the glue. So I'll turn the camera around. I'll be away from the microphone. So for the next two or three or four minutes, you guys have to explain what's going on. I'll be over there cooking. I'll bring back the ec the ex ecky, the, the liquid, and put it back in here. So it's asking paper is out for three printers today. Ishikawa san's already printing in there. She's doing Fuji from Tago Bay. Uh, Ayumi san is here. She's doing another batch of the Nenga print. She's just back from holiday in Hokkaido. And Suga san is here and she's doing a KJ01, the first print in the Kyoto Journey series. We're on the third floor, yes. Okay, you guys take care of yourself for two or three minutes while I go and cook some glue. The stuff in the little bowl is alum. It's uh, not powdered alum, it's alum in bead form. The glue is already soaking in the large bowl that you see, just heating it up. It's been soaking overnight. I'm now going to dissolve the alum in the small container, mix them together and bring them back here. We're cooking today, yes.
Okay, the alum went into boiling water. As soon as it's dissolved, Okay, those of you that have seen this before know the routine. That should sit now a few minutes. I don't really know how many it should sit, two, three, four. Let's give it five. If you can give me a countdown for five minutes. Someone's asking, is this toxic? No, there's nothing in here. This is animal glue. It's made from animal bones, collagen, hides, stuff like that. There's no toxic things here at all. I could, I could drink this. The, in fact, actually, let me check that. A lot of this Nikawa glue is made for food use. No, okay. It says don't put this into your body. So this particular kind of glue, maybe they've put some preservatives in it. I don't know. Normally it would be just, you know, the same kind of stuff you make jello with. But this says, don't put it in your body. So my guess is preservatives are in here. I don't know. Let's test it. After you. So today's mix, we have two liters of water. And I have 70 grams of this uh, granulated glue. And I had 10.5 grams of uh, alum. So it's a, per liter, it's 35 grams of glue and then 15% of that by weight. Now we've got to wait still a couple of minutes. So while we're waiting, I've got two things to show you. We have actually, we have a show and tell, oops, we have a show and tell for later. That's no problem. We have a good show and tell. It's a fun, fun, fun show and tell today. You can keep your socks. There's no problem. It's, it's, you can keep your socks, but it's a fun show and tell. But while we're waiting for the glue to sit, You've seen this before, but I have part two to show you. A few weeks ago, a young lady came in the shop. You know the story. She gave me a package and I showed you the print. And it was a print from a young American guy called Jack Moranitz. He has an Instagram channel, I guess. And he, uh, he sent this print through via his sister. And we were looking at it on the channel, on the, on the chat, and it, it's you know very, very, very nice print. The young man did a very nice job on this. 
I'm, I'm some whatever young man. I'm sorry, whatever Jack, Jack, whatever did a very nice job on us. We saw the letter. He's a fan. He's been looking at this stuff. Blah 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 blah. And in the comments that I made that day, I said really nice things about the print because it is really done beautifully. But I also tossed in a bit of an aside. I must have said something like, "It's too bad Jack didn't have better paper." because the print could really have been quite a lot better if he had had better paper. And his sister was still in Tokyo at the time, so whatever, one thing led to another. She was in the shop. She's a dancer. She was here in Tokyo doing a show. So I gave her a dozen sheets or so of Iwano paper and said, take this over to Jack and he can give it a try. Well, maybe somebody's got links here. Maybe he's already put it up himself. He sent me, he didn't send me another print, but he sent me an image, and let's pop this up. Got to cover the glue. Hang on a sec. Jack sent another image of some prints he has made using the Iwano paper. Excuse my, my bad don't know, production values here. Now we've got different light, different light, etc., etc., etc. But yes, 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 it's so much better. The paper he was using, I think, might have been Kitaro, or maybe it was you know, the one they call Shin Hosho from Matsumura san. It's a very tough, rough, thick paper, it's full of impurities and whatever. Anyway, very, very, very nice job. I know we've talked about this before, you know, Iwano-san, it's the same formula they're using for all the other paper makers, the same raw materials, we've got some of the same thing here. Everything is the same, the same village, the same water coming through, the same air, the same everything, but Iwano-san's family knows how to do this. It's the cooking, it's the, the slow, just it, whatever, whatever, whatever. So there's two things here. One is it's much better paper, and two, Jack also is obviously he's progressing. He's getting better and better and better at this. So anyway, I thought I'd like to show you. I don't. I don't know these prints. This is just an image from Jack. Somebody's probably got a link. I think he's on Instagram somewhere. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this. This is wonderful, wonderful uh, work. Wonderful. Very happy to see this. So I mean, he's he's not my my he's not my student, not my deshi, whatever, but. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful work. Okay, has anybody been counting? Have we got five minutes or so? I don't have an Instagram link. I, I'm sorry. Somebody can put it up here. Sorry. Excuse me. I should have prepared. <laughs> We've had our five minutes, right? Let's do this thing. Someone's got links. Good, good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. table here it's been heating for the past few hours we're on a hot carpet this board that I'm going to put the paper on has been face down under a towel for the past couple of hours everything has been warming up the washi is over here you can't see it from where you are but it's here it's been warming up for the past couple of hours and what we have today for the counters we have 30 sheets 
of Hosho paper, and each one is going to make four Hokusai prints. So it's the first batch of the first run of Hokusai print number two. For those of you who are counting, we're going to do both sides. Somebody, they were in Asakusa two weeks ago, late, 7 p.m. Yeah, 7 p.m., I'm sorry. The staff disappears at 5.30. I'm here, but uh, the shutter was halfway down. <laughs> We've got, this is a problem for us, you know, we got our shutter with a beautiful painting, a beautiful thing on the shutter, but we don't close it at night all the way down, and we can't because I can't open it in the morning. So we leave it halfway down. It's an old shutter, it's very heavy, it's rusty, one of the handles is broken, and if it's all the way down, I almost killed myself with my back trying to open it, so I will absolutely throw out my back. Okay, let me get going on this. I'll, I'll, I'll watch and I'll talk, for just let me get going here. How's our setup? I think we're okay. Thirty sheets. Construction noises indeed. The back just outside the back window here, there's a new building going up. The really noisy part where they tear it down, that's done. But for the rest of this year, we're gonna be hearing the rest of the year, maybe through the summer, I don't know. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, Ishikawa-san is already here. She came about 6.30 this morning, so the first of the printers is already here. And this morning I was working in there. I didn't go to the pool this morning. It's confession time here. It's a Thursday morning. I'm supposed to go to the pool five days a week. I didn't go this morning. Time pressure. Just there's a, I did the Hokusai printing last night till really quite late. I don't even want to admit what time I got to bed last night. It doesn't matter. But I finished my printing on this current batch of the Hokusai prints, threw myself in bed, and this morning those prints have to be on their way to Ome. So th those prints were printed yesterday, but I have to put the embossment on, I have to dry them, trim them, check them, then send them to Ome, and that has to happen today because they'll be packing them tomorrow morning. So I just, I just didn't have time to go to the pool this morning. But I, so I sat there, I started working here, 
around 6, doing the embossing. Ishikawa san came about 6.30. She gets an early start as well. And she comes in, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I, you know, I didn't get, you know, didn't get to the pool. And I learned a funny thing. <laughs> I was trying to, we were speaking Japanese, and I'm trying to explain to her that I felt guilty because I didn't get to the pool. And I don't know how to say this in Japanese. We learn the phrase, I know how to talk about sizing, I can talk about wood block print making. Suga san, good morning, good morning, come and say hello, hello. Suga san, kami wa arimasu ga. Uh, what, 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 So I, did, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know how to explain to Ishikawa how I felt. I feel guilty because I'm here working instead of going to the pool. And I tried to explain it in Japanese and I couldn't. And it points up something interesting. When we're learning another language, of course, the words we learn are the ones we are going to use. And if there's a word that you never use, and may <laughs> I don't know, maybe in the 40 or 50 years I've been learning Japanese, I've, I've never had an occasion to use the word Guilty, I feel guilty. And I said, we said, we like, we're laughing about this this morning, you know, so. Interesting. So I know how to say I'm tired. I know how to say I'm hungry. <laughs> But I don't know how to say I'm guilty. <laughs> so I can see myself in court. Your Honor, how do you plead? Um, um, I, I can't explain. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I should watch more TV <laughs> or something. <laughs> They're going at it. <laughs> They're good friends. <laughs> Once they start working, they don't really talk so much. But this morning, she just come in. Hello, how you doing? Haven't seen a few days. A million things to talk about. It sounds like they're fighting. They're just chatting, saying good morning to each other. But from outside, it sounds like they're yelling and screaming. They're both vivid, active people, both really happy. They're both genki. Honten, if you didn't speak Japanese, you'd think they were fighting. Hello. 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 Suga-san? 
全然大丈夫ですが、今の話はもう世界中の人たちが聞こえますよ。<笑>だから、話すことはちょっと考えてください。<笑>あの今の質問、喧嘩ですか私、いや違う、すぐさま元気ですから。喧嘩じゃないです I didn't ask them I just, I just told her that, by the way, you should remember that lots of people can, be, can hear what you're yelling, what you're talking about right now. That's all I did. I didn't ask her to quit. <laughs> I just said, no, 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 no. I just said, please remember, 100 people or X hundred people or 500 people can hear what you're saying. <laughs> so. My God, I would never ask him to keep it down. No way. <laughs> no way. How long did it take me to learn Japanese enough to communicate with your neighbors? I don't know. I don't know. It's just a, it's like asking a little kid, how long did it take you to speak English? You know, it just comes bit by bit, word by word. I don't know. As we just said a few minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, there's still basic expressions that I can't actually say or use, you know. So my Japanese is really quite spotty. It, it's okay. I'm not, you know, what's today? Thursday. On Tuesday, there were people here for an interview. They came at uh, 1 o'clock, 1.30. The four people came, and the magazine is called Croissant. The, in English, it's Croissant, the, 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 the French, you know, French food. It's the name of a, a, a homemakers-type magazine. In the old days, they really used to be homemakers magazines recipes to keep your husband happy and all that kind of stuff. Now they're more general, women's magazines, it's fashion, concerts, art, cooking, you name it, whatever. But they're still very common. The, the genre is very common here in, in Japan. Anyway, they came, uh, they set it up last year, she set up last year and came over on Tuesday for an interview. And what they do is, when they do it, they're giving us four pages in the magazine in next month's issue. So if you have a Japanese you know, bookshop in your town, Look for the March issue, open in February, of Croissant Magazine. We're getting four pages. And they do a funny thing. And I myself, too, when I go to interview people from my own little newsletter, years ago I used to do this all the time, you may interview somebody and some people are really communicative and some people are just, yes, mm, no, I don't think so. And the interview just goes down. So what these people do, whenever they're interviewing somebody, they bring the writer who's going to write the story. They bring the producer who set the whole thing up. They bring a cameraman who is in the background shooting pictures all the way through. And they bring a guest. And the idea is that rather than the interview being, when did you come to Japan? Instead of that stuff, the guest talks to the target person and the conversation goes. So even if the target person is not so good, the guest can talk and there's some content for the thing. So they, they did this nicely. They came at 1, 1 1.30, somewhere around there, and they left around 7 o'clock. <laughs> it was supposed to be a 90-minute setup, and they left at, I don't know, 7.15 or something. So. So I joked, as we were leaving, <laughs> you know, in other words, we had had a really good conversation. We'd had a really, really good conversation. And as they were leaving, I said, let's see, Yote, we had, a, we had a plan to be here for an hour and a half. We took four times. So instead of four pages, I'm getting 16 pages, right? <laughs> in the magazine. And she just says, uh, mm, uh, well, no. <laughs> we had a great time. conversation went all over the place. I have no idea what they're going to write about. It's going to be fun, but I have no idea. No idea. The lady who had the, 
the lady who is the writer, you know, when it's a conversation like this, a lot of it's just going to be copied and pasted into the story, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the writer has to figure out what to put together, what to do, how to, how to you know, how to edit the thing and put it together. I have no idea what she's going to do because the topics flew all over the universe. Partway through the thing, I call it an interview, it wasn't really an interview, partway through it, she's asking something about the shop here. I think Ayana-san came into the room for a minute to ask me something and then left and they're like, who's this and what's going on? And I explained to her that we are really, really desperate for people. We're short-staffed. We need people all over the building here, you know. And then I sort of, I had a brainstorm. I said, wait a minute, your, your magazine here, who's the typical reader of this magazine? And she said, well, it's, it's, it's females, it's ladies from 30, 40, 50, you know, like that. And I'm like, that's my target. I need a good general manager here. I want an experienced woman who's working for a big company. She can't go up because of the glass ceiling and I want her to quit the big company and come here and be our general manager. Let's in the middle of the story here. Can you put, <laughs> and she starts saying, wait, 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 you know, I can't do your advertising for job searches, you know. I said, no, no, you don't have to put it that blatantly. Just make it obvious somewhere in the story that Dave is looking for a white knight, a white nitrous. <laughs> so they looked at each other and, you know, they're not going to blatantly put in the story. If any readers of this magazine <laughs> would like to think about it. But I hope they hint at this. I hope they do because this is perfect. This is perfect. Well, honestly speaking, I guess, the kind of person that I would like to think of to come here to help me with managing this place perhaps wouldn't be the kind of person who's reading a homemaker's magazine. I don't know. どうしよう、怖い。あ。うん。わかんない。どうしよう、いいと思うんですけど。その あ、丈夫はね。うん、丈夫ですよね。他のもん比べ。だから、カスネがある時に注意、あの水をあの、もうカラカラにしてます。カラカラっていうか、あの、あんまり染みしを強くしないで弱めにして。と、あの、あんま
They are both nice, nice, nice ladies, but I think I can't imagine what it would be like to be married to one of them. <laughs> I don't know. They're both married. Yeah, you know, they're both, they're both married. Ishikawa's son is a little bit older. She has a daughter and one grandchild. Suga-san is married. No children that I... thing is though it'll change in a few minutes. Sugusan is still preparing and getting ready but once she sits at her bench and starts printing the mood changes and it will go very quiet. She might put a little bit of a radio music on. It'll change completely once they start working. Yorkshire accent. No I never I never would have had a Yorkshire accent actually. <coughs> My parents were both working class from Yorkshire. Late when was it? When did they get married? They got married in 1950. They were living in London at the time. My dad was working in London, so they had moved from Halifax down to London. They must have had their own accents. How much they tried to change to become a generic, more of a London accent, I don't know. I was born up in Halifax, but she just simply had gone to Halifax to have the baby and come back to London. So my first years, my, when I was one, two, three, whatever, were spent in London. Then when I was three and a half, I went to a prep school in London, a, a Oxbridge prep school. My parents had, had real uh, aspirations for their little boy. So I would have had a very posh little accent when I was three and a half, four, up till when I was five. I would have been very posh. And then, chup, out of there over to Canada. So I never would have had a Yorkshire accent. And I would love to see some kind of video of me at four years old with my cap and blazer and my school uniform. I can't imagine. Prep school at three, three and a half, three and a half. I was born in November 51 and I went to the prep school, it would have been in the spring, that would have been three and a half. So I went there for two years. It was called Newnham College Preparatory School and it was in, we were in Leightonstone and it was one tube stop to the east when you take the split and go north. Where's that, Walthamstow? I don't remember, I don't know. Yeah, three and a half. What made them decide to move to Canada? Elvis Presley and Chuck Berry. Rock and roll came along. My dad was a dance orchestra musician. All through the 1950s, he was a member of an 18-piece, what they called a dance band or dance orchestra. They had a BBC television show. They had a residency at the Lyceum in Leicester Square. And that was his gig. It was dancing every evening and matinees on the weekends. This is all through the 1950s, 53, 54, 55, 56. 
just about that time over in America, Chuck Berry, Elvis Presley, whatever, transformed entertainment. And young people didn't want to go to a dance hall where there was an 18-piece dance orchestra playing waltzes. Young people wanted to get down and dirty with guitars, and that was the end of it. My dad's employment and that of thousands of musicians, hundreds of thousands of musicians all around the world, evaporated in an instant over a couple of years. So I said Elvis Presley. What I meant was the, the beginnings of rock and roll and the transformation of entertainment for young people. Instead of dance halls, it became, you know, whatever, rock and roll. And literally, hundreds of thousands of, of people were out of work. And in, you, we say overnight. It was practically overnight. And I guess he had had a couple of buddies who had done it before him, maybe, or, uh, or he saw a poster somewhere. The Canadian military at that time, Canada wanted immigrants. The Canadian military was growing. They wanted musicians. And there must have been posters in some uh, green room in one of the halls he was at. The Royal Canadian Air Force looking for musicians. Needed flute, sax, clarinet, blah, 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 blah. He gave him a call. Bang, there we were. August 1957, over to Canada. That was the end of my prep school days. <laughs> so, <laughs> it must have been incredible. Talk about culture shock. Must have been insane. One week I'm going with my little cap and blazer. I'm going to prep school. I'm going to Oxbridge. I'm going to be prime minister one day. Whatever. I have no idea. I don't even remember it. Bang! On a boat, boop, across the Atlantic Ocean, train, Edmonton, a prairie town up in the North Prairies, out in the boonies, and thrown into a Canadian elementary school where, with portables in the classroom, <laughs> in, the, in the schoolyard. <laughs> There's no bigger culture shock than that. I don't remember it at all. I remember nothing of it, absolutely nothing. I don't remember the boat trip, the train trip. I don't remember the prep school. Maybe it's uh, defense mechanisms. It's all <laughs> been blown out. <laughs> no, my dad didn't play on the ship. No, no, my dad had gone advance. He had signed up for the Air Force got it all done, done the contracts, he had flown out in advance. I know all these guys, he wasn't just him, it was a whole bunch of guys together doing this. They had flown out in advance on a military plane to sort of rent a house and get set up and buy some furniture and all that kind of stuff. Then mom and the family took the slow train to Liverpool, across the boat, whatever it was, seven, eight, nine days, train to Edmonton, three days. So, so mom and the two kids, my sister wasn't born yet, mom and me and my brother took the, took the trip by ourselves. We've talked about that before on the street many times. So I found the passenger manifest. We have a copy of the passenger manifest from that trip. See the shininess here, too much liquid. I put too much on. You can see it shiny. Can't see it from the front camera, but you can see it from the side camera, the shiny skating rink right here. Let it soak in. You should make a print of one menu from that trip. I have no menus. I have nothing. I have nothing from the trip at all.
it's shiny, but there's no pool. There's no, there's no water here. It glow, it glistens, but there's no loose water. No, no, my daughters were born in Canada. They were born in Canada. John, you got it wrong. Sorry, they were both born in Canada, 1983 and 1985. I was living in Canada with a Japanese lady. My daughters were born in 83, 85. We moved to Japan in 86. So my daughters essentially grew up in Japan. And then when it became time to get ready for high school, they went back to Canada. So they had their formative years, preschool and elementary school years in Canada, uh, in, in Japan. No, no, I met the Japanese lady in 1979 in Canada. We started living together, 79, 80. We traveled to Japan a couple of times. I took some three months at a time in Japan, twice with the young the lady. Then back in Canada, we were living. I was working at the music store, computer programming, being the general manager of the computer store from 1980 through 1986. And that's the time my kids were born. There is, you know, for those curious, someone's got some, I do have an autobiography on the website. There's a, there's an outline of all this stuff, the Halifax, London, boat trip, Canada, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> it's all in my news, in newsletter from the back, from the good old days. There's a newsletter on the website called Shakunin Isho. And in there, there's a story called From Halifax to Ham Hamra. And it's got all the, it talks about this whole journey for anybody that's interested. Looking good today, looking good. Recently, I'm always saying this, we're getting good at this. Was my wife a Japanese citizen? Yes, yes. She's Canadian now, I believe, but at the time she was Japanese. There's a picture on the website. We're talking about the cap and blazer. And I keep telling you I don't remember the stuff, but there's a picture on the woodblock.com website, the section that's about the newsletter, the Shakunin Isho newsletter. Follow the links, this, the sequence of stories called From ha Halifax to Hamra. There's a picture. Little Dave in his cap and blazer. Someone says in mid-May in Asakusa, the, sh the, sh the shop is open, we're up and running, the shop's open. We're closed Tuesdays, we're open every other day than that. <laughs> but I have to say, I shouldn't talk about this or not, I don't know. Someone says, I will be in mid-May, be staying in Asakusa, can I come to the shop? You can come to the shop and look at some bare walls. Because <laughs> there ain't going to be anything left by then. Come and enjoy the bare walls. I have no idea what to do.
So have to get the gallery up and running. I know, I know, I know. The minute I get back from Canada, I got to hit the ground running on that one. I have about two or three weeks to get it ready. I'm back from Canada on the 22nd, all through March. I guess through March, I have to build the gallery. And then April 1st, grand opening. Someone's got a link, yeah, to the old, 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 old website. So we're just selling out of everything. Absolutely selling out of everything. You name it. Our own prints, the Doi prints, Yoshida, you name it. Antique stuff. A year ago, in the, before the thing opened up, a year ago, we were cash poor and inventory rich. And now we are inventory poor and, quote, for a while, cash rich. Not rich, but whatever. We have money to buy inventory, to hire printers, to hire people. Money is not a problem right now, but we have no things. We have no stuff. They're all working at capacity, all the printers, of course. Someone used the word locusts. We try and avoid using that word here. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so awful to talk like this. Sometimes at the end of the day in the shop, it's whatever. We're getting a cup of coffee at the end of the day. We've turned the lights off and everybody's getting ready to go home. And now and then the word locust comes into the conversation. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just sort of when we think we're getting a handle on it, we might get a batch of shipments in from a couple of our printers. We get a package from Namabisan, the Yoshida print, something like this. Then, then a, we had one customer come in, he bought 128 prints. I don't know, 128 prints. One person. He just he was taking them as fast as he could out of the bins and putting them on the counter. He had staff, helpers helping him sent a driver over to pick them up later, 128 prints. And you can't say no. You can't say, excuse me, limit one per person, limit five. This is a, a supporter, a fan, a person that's been here before. He's helping us. You can't say no, please stop. 128 prints. Some other customers were in the shop at the same time. And actually, we put them in the back room with a cup of tea because it was just, uh, they had to sit there while this guy took 128 prints. And the Take Osan and whatever rang him up and, and we're happy, good person, wonderful person, supporting our work, he wants stuff. And then the bins are empty. We get on the phone to try and No, and this wasn't a reseller. If it had been a reseller, a person who I know was a reseller, I would have stopped it. I would have said, sorry. No. I get what you're doing. I like that you want our work, but no. No. But this wasn't a reseller, this was uh, a fan, a supporter.
How we do for time? I wasn't watching. 8.58. I think I may have been talking too much. I'm not working enough. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You guys get me going sometimes. Someone says, why don't I like resellers? No, no, it's irrelevant to me. You know, it's bad for the consumers. They are selling at much higher prices than we sell. So a lot of consumers are paying too much for the product is one part of it. It doesn't hurt my sales. I'm not worried about he's stealing my customers. That's irrelevant to me. We, we, we sell everything we have. It's simply the prices. It's the prices. Someone says, advertise more. We <laughs> advertising more is irrelevant to us. We don't have enough prints. We're not trying to sell more. We need to make more. No, no, it wasn't gift. 128, it wasn't gifts. The person has a rather large residence and a rather large family. That's all I can say. It's none of my business to start speaking personal information about our customers. But uh, it wasn't for reselling. It was for residents and family. <laughs> wising, what's wising? I think some of you guys are very eager and typing a little bit too quick sometimes. <laughs> this paper is for the Hokusai print. One, two, three, four. It's for the second print in the Hokusai series.
No, this is not uh, advanced paper for one of my way. Printing on this one is going to start. You know, the printer wants this tomorrow. Nechan, she needs this tomorrow to start test printing. And if the test printing goes well, this paper will be used next week for starting the first edition. We're trying to get ahead of this stuff. So this particular paper is not for a while I'm away. Here you are, last sheet. We're up and running. Last one. Okay, here we are. You know the drill. You know the drill. Mods and or other people can explain what's happening here. I'll just get busy with moving. Do not panic. The visual system is going to change. Some of the cameras are going to disappear. This little camera is history. The other larger one is temporarily going to shut down while I move all this gear to the next room. Step one, the paper. Step two, the power. Step three, the audio.
Testing, one, two, I think we have got it all back together. Main camera on, short camera on, chat on. We're up and running. Sorry about that, took time, okay. Again, we have our translucency to show it, if you can see it. I don't want to spoil this paper here. Beautifully wet, beautifully smooth. How's our time? Oh, well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. We're okay for show and tell. If I, if I just keep my nose down and get this going, we have a nice little show and tell that can be actually shown in a short time. So, yeah, I think we're on track for it. It's 9.14 now. If I keep my nose clean, we're okay. We can do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is number seven. If there were indeed 30 sheets as planned, then it means I have to hang 15. This is number seven. 
Should be eight left, eight pairs left. You show and tell today, actually. <clears throat> I, I know it's inside it. I mean, of course, I know it's inside it because I bought it. But I also know it's inside it because, actually, it's opened already. The, I'll, I'll bring you the package in a moment. And the reason it's opened is because when we were doing that, that interview the other day, the one I spoke to you a few minutes ago, the interview for the, for the magazine Croissant, the conversation jumped all over the place. And we went up to the collection room to look at some of the collection. And they were asking me where the prints and stuff in the collection came from. So right on the floor next to me as I was standing there were three or four packages that we had just received. So I reached down, grabbed the package and opened it and showed them what was inside. Then I realized, ah, this is one. I wanted to open this on the next stream. <laughs> so as soon as they were gone, I got my green tape and taped it up again. So we're going to see what's what's it called? A recreation. <laughs> I forget the word they use. I don't know. Uh, what do you call it? I forget. It starts with re recreation, is it? Or uh, put all the pieces back together and show you what it. <laughs> or re re unboxing. I don't know. I'm not a cheater. I'm telling you. I'm opening. I'm not going to... I wouldn't do this without telling you about it. So... And, uh, it's funny because as they were here and as I was tearing it open, it was green tape and I thought, oh Jesus, look at this. The first time in nine years we get green tape and I've spoiled it. I've opened it not on the stream. <laughs> That's what made me realize or decide to put it back together. So. Reenactment. That's it. That's it. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> like it makes a difference. But whatever. So today, today's show and tell opening is a reenactment as it happened. Here we are. Last one. How's our time? We're good to go. We have 10 minutes. I'm fine. This is perfect. 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 Okay, how are we going to do this?
Don't forget about the tape at the bottom of the last pair. It's okay, it can stay there, no problem. It can stay there. Okay, so we're gonna look. Here, let's do this. I will turn the humidifier on. Just give me a minute. I got it. There's no water in it, so I can't fool around with it right now. So, humidifier is not on, but Dave is here breathing into the room, so it's okay. We're okay for a few minutes. Well, here's the next printer. This must be Ayumi-san. I got my mask. Whoa, whoa, wait, panic, panic. Kero, kero. I recognize by the slippers. This is Ayumi-san. Oh, san Good morning, good morning. Paper's here, this side. Uh, I need the uh, 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 Stop by and say hello. It's Tony. Where, 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 where? Come and come, come, <laughs> come, 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 come say hello for a minute. Hey, here's the camera. Where are you? I don't, I don't know either. This is Ayumi san, Ohashi, mother of two, back at work. How are you doing? Oh, hi, so, She's printing more of the Nenga prints right now these uh, days. Nenga so, prints. So, Nenga, I know. It's not a Nenga job. What are they such a Get to work, get to work. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, a whole different kind of lady. She comes in and there's no chaos and panic. She's much quieter, so. Okay, let's look at these pens. <clears throat> As you said, reenactment. This is how I saw it just the other day. It did have green tape, but this is replacement tape. This one is fun. It's a nice little item. So the other two came alive to show you've heard that it's been total silence now for the past 15, 20 minutes. Okay, we are pre-war. I've shown you before these menus, remember? The menus from the NYK line, where the, the people came by tourists. They traveled uh, from San Francisco or Seattle over to Yokohama, whatever. Tourists in Japan in the 1930s. It was a big, big, big deal, tourism in Japan. Oh, look at this. They've given me a little tab. I haven't opened this part yet. I just opened the envelope to show the magazine people the other day. This is Kyoto stuff aimed at tourists in 1930, whatever, 1930, 1935. They are not menus. I mentioned the word menus to, to set the stage here. The people who were on those boats reading those menus arrived in Japan. We have here one, two, three, four packs. The auction was for four, four packages of letter paper, just a sec. Oh, look at this. It's a kid. It's a children, a child writing. The auction was for four packets, which seems to be four packets. Oh, I see. There's a damaged one. What the Mizuoko was <laughs> It's a child's writing. She is she, he, whatever. I am at the mizu wo koboshite shimaimashita. So they've got it. They must have spilled water on. They had five. They spilled water on one of them. So on the auction, they just listed four, but she's giving me five sets. Nice kid, nice girl. And it's a child. Hi, hi, domo, domo. I only changed. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Camera, so come on. The staff change room is just behind me here, the curtain. So, <clears throat> why is a child reselling prints? I have no idea. This this is news to me. I haven't seen this before. The auction was for four packages of letter paper 
from the 1930s. Let's have a look at one. It says, Mokuhanga Binsen. And Binsen is the word we would use for letter paper. Kyo Miyage. Kyoto Omiyage. And of course, it's aimed at foreigners. There's two ways we can tell it's aimed at foreigners. One is the English here. And the second is, the letter paper is horizontal style. Japanese Binsen, and we can buy Binsen now in any stationery store. Japanese Binsen is vertical. The picture here would be at the side and the person would be writing their letter vertically. But this stuff horizontally, it's obviously aimed at foreigners. And each package has 10 woodblock prints. And the paper lines also are done with woodblock printmaking. I wonder what it cost back then. No idea. Very thin paper. Get your ballpoint, your fountain pen out. Let's have a look. It's getting a bit moldy, you know. It's been around. As this is, uh, as I said, 1930 would be my guess, best guess. So these are more than 90 years old. It's been sitting, waiting in somebody's drawer for 90 plus years. Let me see. Let me take it aside. 90 years mai no Kyoto kara no mokohanga binsen kyo miyagi. Yeah. This. It's pretty much all the same kind of stuff. It's Maiko-san, the stuff that the tourists would have really been interested in seeing. Kanko kyaku no tami ni. It's good to have that. え、本当に京都の。うん。え、いくらだったんだろう。そう、いくらだった。そう、いくらだった。ちょっと the printing on this these would have been printed this is really really quite rough printing あの、mm. So they would have been printed on just the dry paper. There would have been no uh, no moistening, no registration. They are opaque pigments for the most part. And because the paper is so thin, it's more like a sort of a Chinese type of printing, you know, あの、本当に中国も、ね、絞りとかさ、すごい綺麗だし。5分とか。This uh, is not the type of you know, mulberry paper. This is gasenshi. So, like, so. So. This is not the gloriously expensive hosho paper that we would use for making woodblock prints. This is like a like a calligraphy paper, like a gasen sheet. It wouldn't have been intended to last for a million mm. years. <laughs> there we have it. What do we do with it now? Write letters on and send it out? <laughs> so.
Okay, we've got five packs of it. I'm keeping, I guess, one one or two packs for the collection, and the rest, I guess, I don't know. I have to talk to Watanabe san. Put them in the put them in the shop. Maybe not really quite sure. Would people want these? I don't know. There we have it. So we made it. Good, 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 good. Thank you. I said it was a little, nice little cute show and tell. Nothing to blow anybody's socks off. <coughs> read the letter. I did read the letter. It says it apologizes. The letter said, I'm sorry I spilled water on one of those. It's now dry and I'll put it in as a free service for you. And the person's name is there. I'm not going to put that on. So. Want to see the water damaged one? I think. Let's have a look. What they've done is, let's zoom out a bit. I see, they've just shown me with plastic. I had no big deal, I wouldn't have complained. I wouldn't have said anything about this. You can see, there's a bit of a water stain. Considering it's 90 years old, I am not going to complain. So there we have it. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up for today. Thank you for following along. I perhaps earlier in the stream today, I was perhaps talking a bit too much, not didn't get enough work done, but whatever, whatever. Okay, thank you very much. Next stream now is two days from now, Saturday morning. Almost certainly I will be downstairs at the carving bench working on the blocks for the surfer girl. I believe that's the plan for Saturday anyway. And we will have a guest. The lady I talked about to you before, the lady from Switzerland who showed me the book about the Utamaro birds. She will be here on Saturday uh, as a guest. She's going to sit in and help me read the chat and she's going to show us her work. She's here because some of her own ink painting is in an exhibition at a modern art museum here in Tokyo right now. So she'll be visiting on Saturday morning. She'll sit in. I'll carve and we'll chat together and I guess we'll show some of her work and her book. Things like this. Thank you very much. I'll see you two more days from now. I can't close off with the outside camera because uh, there is no outside camera today. But there we go. Let's close off with this little young lady. Okay. Thanks very much. Bye for now. See you in two more days.